Welcome to Black Brains on the B-Side. My name is Andrew Weaver and I'm your host. So this episode is about a brilliant black brother by the name of Otis Frank Boykin. Now he's an American inventor and engineer, but we're going to travel throughout his life from his birth until he left us. And we want to be able to give the soundtrack to people's lives to give some kind of context as to what was going on in the world. So we're going to do that for all the people that we expose and celebrate. So Otis Frank Boykin was born on August 29th, 1920. He was born in Dallas, Texas. Now, in the 20s, some of the favorite music back then, especially for people of color, was ragtime music. And there was an artist by the name of Mammy Smith uh, who sang the song Crazy Blues. So his father is Walter B. Boykin. Now, he was a carpenter. His mother, named Sarah Ann Cox, was a maid. Now, his mother died of heart failure when he was only one years old. So uh, he never really knew his mother at all, uh, only through stories. So Boykin attended Booker T. Washington High School in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. He was a valedictorian and graduated in 1938. Now in 1938, Count Basie was singing the song uh, Blue and Sentiment. So you get a feel for what it was like in the era that he graduated high school, where we all kind of like ready to take on the world and trying to figure our way out um, and how things are going to be for our, our lives and our careers. Uh, this brilliant black brother was a valedictorian and graduated at the top of his class. He ended up going to Fisk University, which is in Nashville, Tennessee. Got a scholarship, like I said, the guy was brilliant. And he worked as a laboratory assistant at an aerospace laboratory. So we knew that this guy was kind of special intellectually. He was doing things that not the average black person was doing in his time. At least not what most people thought was average. You have to understand that this is in the 1930s, almost 1940s. And just for context, you know, like my... Uh, father and mother were working on a farm at that time, had no idea that black people had this type of opportunity from Mississippi. They were, they had no clue. They were sharecroppers and they did farming and stuff like that. So they didn't have this access. They didn't even know it was possible. So to think that in the 1930s, early 40s, this black brilliant brother was doing some amazing things. So he was at this laboratory, aerospace laboratory in Tennessee until 1941. Now in 1941, the Ink Spots was on the radio with the song, I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire. Now he moved to Chicago where he found work as a clerk at an electro manufacturing company until he was hired as another laboratory assistant at the Majestic Radio and TV Corporation. Being in a lab in that sense, it wasn't like he had Petri dishes. This was all engineering. Now he worked there and he became the foreman of their factory. A lot of people who knew him doing research, I found out, partners that he worked with said that he was very intelligent. And most of his partners were white. So in 1944, Straighten Up and Fly Right by Nat King Cole and the King Cole Trio, uh, which consisted of Nat King Cole, Oscar Moore, and Johnny Miller. He was working for PJ Nielsen Research Labs. If anybody knows who Nielsen is, the Nielsen ratings, uh, that's been around for a long time. And they started doing other type of, of measurements and advertising and so forth. And they kind of moved toward the study of people watching television. There are so many people in our communities throughout the United States that actually watch television and rate the shows that they watch. And then Nielsen bases it off of their ratings off of that. So if a station tells you like, well, we got, we're, we're number one in the ratings, that's where they're getting the ratings from is these people throughout the United States, not all of us, get the opportunity to be able to be a part of the Nielsen ratings uh, situation. But that is how they figure out who's watching what and where. So by 1946, he decided to further his education. He attended the Illinois Institute of Technology. In 1946, Louis Jordan Choo Choo Chaboogie. Okay, we all have some crazy names of songs, but that song was playing when Boykin was 25 in 1946 and going back to school after he was a valedictorian at Booker T. Washington and went off to Fish University and graduated. He decided to extend his education and go further uh, and get uh, his master's, I would guess, at this point at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Boykin would have to drop out from the Illinois Institute of Technology because it was rumored 
that he could not afford it, so therefore he had to leave. But many years later, he came out and said that the reason why he left was to start a business with Dr. Hal F. Fruth. He was a mentor of his, and they began to work together and had many experiments and patents together. So in 1953, he received his first patent. Now here's the thing. As you look at this patent on the screen, most people think that it was 1959, this patent here, that was his first patent, but it wasn't. It was the one in 1953. We did a little research, a little depth, and found out that that wasn't true. And in 1953, James Brown was on the radio singing, Try Me. Now, I know this song. Now, I was not born at the time, but I definitely know this song. I love this song. So in the early 60s, Boykin was a senior project engineer at the Chicago Telephone Supply Corporation. It was later known as CT Labs. It's still around today. It was here that he did much of his research on the pacemaker. Boykin sued CTS for $5 million. Now, he asserted that his former employer had obtained a patent and tried to take credit for the device that he developed. Mind you, Otis Boykin was a genius in many people's eyes because he had developed a lot of electron resistors at the time that most people just did not understand. He lost this lawsuit. It was eventually thrown out. It doesn't say why it was dismissed, but it was dismissed. But he didn't let it get him down. He continued on. He went on to open up a, a consulting and research company with offices in both the U.S. and Paris, France in 1964. Now, in 1964, Sam Cooke was on the radio with a hit song of a change is going to come. No, in his mind, a change was always coming. He had just lost his case. And now he was on his own consulting. He went on to create an electrical capacitor in 1965 and an electrical resistance capacitor in 1967. This brother did not stop inventing. The weirdest thing is like nowadays, if you work for a company and you come up with this grand idea, but you're still employed by them, they somehow own the idea. Even if it's something that you came up on your own at home, but working for a company that you do the same type of work for, you came up with it at home. If you use anything, anything that your employer gave you to make it, like a 3D program that they paid for on a laptop that they paid for, you created it on there. They can try and sue you as the owner of a product that you didn't develop for them, but you did on their program, their software, their server. They'll sue you and say, you did it on company time and they own the patent. Somewhere in history, that shifted because it didn't used to be like that. And like I always said, I have NDAs that I can give you guys for free if you want them. I paid for them, but I don't care. I'm looking to advance my brothers and sisters as much as possible. And if I can cut that down a little bit by giving you an NDA that has a, a, a clause in it so that you know no one can steal your product, hey, I'll give it to you. Just hit me up at info at blackbrilliantsonthebside.com. And I hit you up. If not that, you can also go to Black Dollar Fund. That's another part of my company. Info at blackdollarfund.com. Hit me up there. I'll send you a copy. Save you a few hundred dollars. Let's do this. So in 1967, when he made the resistance capacitor, R-E-S-P-E-C-T was on TV and radios and stadiums throughout the United States and all over the world with Aretha Franklin. This brother demanded respect. He may not have always gotten it, but he demanded it just by his work ethic and his ability to believe in himself. Even when people were trying to steal from him, that brother kept going. Otis Frank Boykin actually had about 26 patents at the time of his death. Now, he was best known for inventing the electronic control devices for guided missiles. Okay, guided missiles. It's, it's just an amazing thing that we don't talk about the brilliance that this brother brought to the world. And it wasn't just America. I mean, it was France. It was all over. He deserves to be respected. What he did is allow certain things to work more effectively and efficiently with his resistors, his capacitors that he was building. And if you see these capacitors, you look at it, he's like, oh, these are these little things. But these things were so precise with different types of electrical devices. I mean, missiles require his technology to be effective. IBM computers and also the pacemaker. The automatic cardiac pacemaker essentially uses electrical impulses to maintain a regular heartbeat. His products allowed that to be more effective. He didn't create the pacemaker, 
but the pacemaker would not have worked without his device inside of the pacemaker. It's what kept the regular heartbeat. The electrical pulses came from his technology. It's just unreal what, what he was able to do. And we know nothing about him. I knew nothing about him. Now, he also invented a burglar-proof cash register and a chemical air filter. This black, brilliant brother is amazing. Amazing, my people. And we knew nothing about him. We've taken for granted all the lives that have been saved and lengthened because of the pacemaker and the device within it that kept the heartbeat, heart rate regular was because of him. I don't understand that, you know, we can have products on our body, in our bodies, and not know that black people were a major part in its development, in its efficiency. It's just unreal. We give credit to white people for what they've done, but there are black people we know nothing about because even in Black History Month, like I said before, we play that A side. We play that Martin Luther King. We play that Malcolm X. We play that Medgar Evers. We play all of these people who have done wonderful things for us, but we ignore those who have also done wonderful things for us. We are brilliant on multiple levels. And it's about time we know all the levels of our brilliance, not just one side. Not all of us are activists, but we are all brilliant. Trust and believe that. We just celebrate one side of things, whether we're in entertainment, sports, but rarely do we celebrate the science, the education. Every once in a while, we hear some brilliant brother and we're like, wow, there's a lot that we don't know about because we don't celebrate that and we need to. And that's why I'm here for Otis Frank Boykin died on March 26, 1982 in Chicago. At the time, Marvin Gaye was on the radio singing Sexual Healing. This song, I remember it well. One of my favorite artists. I'll never forget him singing the anthem. I was like, this brother could sing the phone book, the Bible, uh, a history book, and make it cool. But Otis Frank Boykin was cool too. I just didn't know about you, brother, but I do now. I respect that, and I will celebrate you from here on out. You're on the B side in my heart, but the A side in my mind, okay? Always on the A side, but I say the B side because we didn't know about you, brother. At least I didn't, and there's many like me, I'm sure. And I want to thank you for your contributions. I want to thank you for doing everything you could while you were alive to make the world a better place. You've saved a lot of lives. you saved a lot of lives, my brother. And you continue to do so with your technology. And, uh, you know, it's an amazing thing. It's a beautiful thing to, to see black, brilliant people do brilliant things. It goes to prove if we have an opportunity, we'll make the best of it. But without opportunity, we don't see that this is possible. And by your example, and us not forgetting, many of us too will do the same thing. Our brilliance will shine. I thank you for this, brother. I really do. Uh, may you rest in peace, continue to rest in peace, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. I want to be able to see all of these black, brilliant people and thank them for what they did for our people. You will never be forgotten, at least as long as I live. I look forward to seeing you guys and talking to you guys. You can reach me on all of my social media. I have a YouTube channel. Go to blackbrilliantsonthebside.com. You can check that out. Until next time. My name is Andrew Weaver for Black Brilliance on the B-Side. You guys, I love you. Take care.